Hey guys, this is Suraj here from Amundra Siksha. Uh, I hope you have all seen my previous videos and I hope you liked it. If not, please do go check it out. I leave a link in the description or in the video. And so this video is completely about l learning how to produce music. And this right now I'm going to teach it in Ableton, but I think you can follow the same steps and procedure in various DAWs such as Logic or FL Studio or Reaper or even Cubase in that matter, Pro Tools, etc. It's all the same rules that I'm going to teach. It's just that you have to apply it in a different DAW. And I hope that that should be simple. I hope that's not going to be a much of a task. So before me teaching you how to produce music in a particular daw i really want you to understand what is tempo and what is beat structure if you do not know what is tempo or what is beat structure please do kindly go back to my previous videos which i've released i've explained in depth what is tempo and what is beat structure but for this video i'll explain what is tempo again tempo is nothing but it defines the speed of a track and tempo is really important for a genre because a genre will be identified by certain things and the main thing is tempo a person can easily identify a genre only or pretty much mostly using a tempo so the one which i'm gonna produce right now is a progressive house and the tempo for a progressive house is 128 and for you to change the tempo in ableton all you have to do is just go here where i'm clicking right now and i'm gonna type 128 there so that sets my tempo to 128 and i'm gonna teach you how to produce music in this arrangement view and not in the live or session view which you can see it right now here i will teach how to produce music in the live or arrangement view but i think i should start a in a little easier way rather than making it complicated so i'm gonna f for now teach you how to produce music in arrangement view i'll try to keep this video as short as possible so that you guys don't get bored or probably sleep off during the video i'll try my best to keep it interesting and i hope it sounds good but before that let me just go quickly add a limiter in my master so that i don't clip or hurt your ears while doing something and uh, so i'm gonna go grab some waves l1 limiter <coughs> set the out ceiling to probably 1.5 db so that whatever i do you guys don't get hurt by it And most of you are wondering what I'm doing right now. All I'm doing is I'm just putting a plugin in my master so that no matter whatever I do, it is not going to cross more than minus 1.5 dB. It is never going to cross the 0 dB so that you don't get hurt by it. And, you know, neither am I distorting the sound. Uh, so that's about it. I'll, I'll though teach what is limiter and how you're supposed to limit in your master channel, everything in the upcoming videos. But for now, I'm going to produce a progressive house beat and it is going to be super simple. All I want you to do is concentrate really into what I'm doing rather than looking around or, you know, trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. Just go step by step. And it is simple. It is very simple nothing complicated or anything as such the first thing i want you to do is go to your tempo set the tempo to 128 db because we are going to pro produce a beat which is similar to progressive house so i want you to set the tempo or your bpm which is beats per minute to 128 db and then i'm not going to deal with any of the audio files right now here which means no audio i'm, I'm not going to import or export any audio files right now so i do not want this audio clips to be present so I'm going to delete the audio clip and leave this audio clip here. And the, the reason why I'm leaving it here is all of my voice and everything is getting recorded using this audio clip. So I do not want to remove this so that where you guys don't hear me what I'm trying to say. So that's the sole purpose why this audio clip stays. Right now, all we need is MIDI clips. The reason why we need MIDI clips is for you to produce music in any DAW, you will need a MIDI clip in which the piano roll is present. A MIDI is nothing but a program data which consists of a lot of, you know, uh, datas which could be either alpha or numeric, which is nothing but your notations, your, your notations, whatever you put in. This is how it communicates with the DAW. A MIDI is how you communicate with the DAW telling 
see right now i'm gonna play this notation you go tell it to the daw to play it at whatever time i'm playing and how do you do that you do that by using a midi clip that is the you know simple explanation of what a midi can do now i want you to create a midi clip in the midi track this is a track the one which i'm clicking here the entire thing this is a track now i want you to create a midi clip which will be present in a midi track and how do you create that just drag and highlight of how many hour bars you want it is usually recommended to either do it in four or eight bars always do it in multiples of four because this is a four by four structure if you see here it is a 4 by 4 structure the one where i'm clicking it's a 4 by 4 structure so it is always recommended to do which is always divided by 4 so i want to do either in 4 8 or 16 or 32 to keep it simple i'm going to just do it for 4 bars right now drag it and highlight it till where the 4 bar ends right click and the moment you right click you see insert midi clip click on that and your midi clip falls into it there is also a shortcut to do it where drag it highlight it and if you're using a macbook press command shift and m if you're using windows it's control shift and m as simple as that the moment you click it click on the midi clip the moment you click the midi clip you see a piano rolls now this is where you're gonna draw your notations or your notes where you're gonna put in let's say you're gonna put in a chord you're gonna put in a drum kit you're gonna put in a you know whatever pads leads could be anything i'm only gonna teach you how to produce a beat right now i'm not gonna teach you how to produce a bass line i'm not gonna teach you how to produce chords nothing first thing which is really important to produce any sort of genre or any musical track is you need to come up with a solid beat structure so this is I'm gonna sh in this video I'm gonna show you how to produce a beat structure now to produce a beat structure you need drum kit and in your Ableton or in any of your DAW for sure you would see a drum samples or you know anything that that is more like a percussive element so in Ableton I have this tab called drums and in my drums I see a lot of drum kits but then all of these drum kits might not fit in for progressive house some drum kit could be hip-hop some drum kit could be reggaeton some drum kit could be used for rock and roll so you actually need to cultivate the sense of music on which you feel acha this is the one which i'm gonna use to produce my progressive house this is the one i'm gonna use to produce my hip-hop you need to segregate your drum kit in such a way that you know it it is not too contrast or it is not out of your genre so now I'm going to select a kit which is called 707. I'm just going to type it in my search bar because rather than going and wasting my time searching it, I can just select and then, you know, the more and select in my search bar and then type 707. The moment I type 707, all of my 707 kit comes up. I'm going to choose the basic one, which is 707 classic. How do you put that in your MIDI clip? You either I'll just undo that so that you see it again. You either click that 707, drag and drop it on your MIDI track. The moment you drag and drop it on your MIDI track, you just saw the change over here, which and also your MIDI track's name changed itself into Kit 707. That is one way you're gonna do it. The other way is click the MIDI track and double click the instrument. As simple as that. So there are two ways for you to assign this instrument to this particular track now i'm gonna click the midi clip the moment you click the midi clip you see this piano roll but it's super short it's not as big where you know it's convenient for us to draw notations the moment you hover your mouse over here you will find the symbol the black symbol which has arrow up and down click on it and drag it up the moment you drag it up if if in case you wanna zoom in your you know piano roll there is a way to do it either the moment you hover it over this numbers which says 2.1 2.2 2.4 click it you might get this round uh, you know a hand holding a round magnifier that's that's nothing but a magnifier glass click it and then hover it down for it to expand and hover it up for it to contrast that's how you zoom in or zoom out now 
you see these numbers, right? Which is 1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. What are these numbers? What is it trying to tell us? This is nothing but a bar. This tells us that this entire thing is a bar. In a bar, there are four beats. 1, 2, 3, 4. This makes a bar. But in your DAW, it does not give 1, 2, 3, 4. Because it needs to have, in, in a DAW, you're going to produce a track for more than a three minutes or four minutes and I cannot go in a sequence of numbers hence to simplify it it gives you in decibels what what do I mean by that is what anything point wherever point comes it means a decibels so this is 1 1.2 1.3 1.4 this makes a bar 2 2.2 2.3 2.4 this makes the second bar 3 3.3 3 point, sorry, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4. 3 this makes the third bar. 4, 4.2, 4 4.3, 4.4. This makes your fourth bar. And it can go so on, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. But I wanted you to create a four bar if you remember. That is why it ends at 4.4, which means that's the end of the fourth bar. Now, in a progressive house beat structure, there is going to be kick in every count. Four counts make a bar like I said. One, two, three, four. In your progressive house, the kick goes in all the counts, which means the moment you open the piano roll after adding your kick drum, you're going to see all the samples on your left hand side, which says kick, rim, snare, hat, snare, kick, different sorts of kick. If you want to try them out before laying it, you have this headphone button, which means solo. And the moment you click, you hear it. So these are the sim you know, samples which are there in this drum kit. And if you want to listen to them, again, click on this headphone button. If this headphone button is not clicked, then you might not hear anything even though you click this piano keys. So click the headphone button and then click over them so that you can hear what you, what you want to lay it down in your piano roll. Now I want a kick in every count. So I'm going to put a kick. This is my first count under my 1.2, which is my second count. I'm going to put another kick under my 1.3. I'm going to put another kick under my 1.4. I'm going to put another kick. So now I have four kicks in all my four counts, which is one, two, three, four. I want the same to happen in the second bar, which is two, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 and so on for my third and fourth bar. Now I cannot waste time clicking, dragging, clicking, dragging, clicking, dragging, clicking, and dragging. This is gonna cost me some time. Meanwhile, I'm doing this, I have some other ideas and I'm losing it because of doing this. So there's a simple way for you to do it. Select all the no notes from your first to second bar exactly, right click and duplicate. The moment you duplicate, you just saw that it duplicated for your third and fourth bar. Now I did it by doing right click and then pressing duplicate. You can also, there's also a shortcut where select exactly the bars which you want to duplicate, press command and D. D stands for duplicate. Command and D in your MacBook, control and D in your Windows. The moment you do that, the kick is getting duplicated for your third and fourth bar. Now. When you play, it plays exactly on the count. I'm going to count on it. So please listen. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. So I have on all of my counts the kick. Now, how do you place the snare for a beat structure like progressive house you're gonna place the snare on the second and fourth beat what do i mean by second and fourth beat which is 1.2 and 1.4 i'm gonna place it on 1.2 and then i'm gonna place it on 1.4 now i'm gonna duplicate this i'm not you know i'm not gonna again click on 1 2.2 and 2.4 all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select this bar command d command d command d or control d if you're using windows so now I'm going to listen to this and whenever you count, 
your kick should be in your kick should be in all the counts your snare should be in second and fourth count i'm going to first play and then i'm going to count so now i'm going to count and i'm going to tell you that i'm going to make sure that the snare is on second and fourth and the kick is on all the four counts now 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 as you saw whenever i said 2 and whenever i said 4 there was a snare and whenever i said 1 2 3 4 in all the counts the kick was there now i'm pretty much done with the most important part which is my kick and snare now i have other samples to make it a little interesting but from now you specifically don't have to be on a count like how you were on first and second but it is a rule it is it is a rule you can't you know mess around with your snares or kick it has to be in first and second count because that's how the rule of this genre works certain things yes of course there are rules which you have to follow but it is not necessary for everything to be on a rule for example i'm going to put my hats in a place where i feel it's going to sound better i'm not going to go into any specific count for example let's say i put it here and i put it here i put it here and i put it here let's see how it sounds okay now i kind of felt it's not interesting so i'm going to delete this and i'm going to zoom in more and i'm going to put it at a beat where it's even more closely packed let's see how this works okay sounds a little interesting now i'm going to click this i'm going to duplicate the all the bars now all i did was i just zoomed in and i went into the third count in the first third milli count in the first count which is 1 1.1.2 1.1.3 1.1.4 1. 1. 1. this makes one count in one count there are again four counts added in so which is nothing but 1 1.1.2 1.1.3 1.1.4 1. so now i'm going to put it in every third milli count so now it's going to sound like not bad i kind of liked it but i think i can make it more interesting by putting my hats say on an open hat i don't want to be a closed hat here i'm going to put a open hat over there and i'm going to do the same for this so let's see how this sounds so it kind of sounds okay to me now see from now on it's up to you if you want to go create your baseline or chords but if you want to do more interesting with the beat structure you can stay ahead because as i told the beats are one of the most important thing in a track it is to the beats that human hears tend to act in a crazy way and they start tapping their hands or legs so it is really important for you to make the listeners jump in a certain point so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a certain change i'm going to get this down i'm going to put this up and uh, i might try putting a cowbell let's see how it sounds if i put a cowbell i'm going to put it in random locations like i said and let's see how it works okay i don't want it here let's put it here I I think it seems pretty cool to me right now. I as as you saw I just put it in random places. I didn't even, you know, try putting in second or fourth beat because as I told, your kick and snare are the only things that has to stay in count because that's how the genre 
is being classified that's the rule of the genre but other than that anything else you want you can put it in a place where you feel it sounds good it should just sound good it doesn't matter where you put it should just give you that groove and that you know happy feeling and that's about it you don't have to worry about where you're putting those samples now let's see if we can do something else with the ride or probably the rim let's see if i can do something with the rim uh i kind of didn't like the rim because i felt that it's overlapping with my cows and also with my hats so one of the best thing you notice right now is when i put my rim you couldn't hear the rim shots actually as clear as you're hearing the hats and cowbell and snare the reason if you see is because my snare is you know is is not overlapping with the cowbell and even if it does it's of a different frequency it's not of the same fundamental frequency so that is why you can hear the snare and cowbell much clearer than rim so in cases like this i would not recommend you to overlap elements on another element just remove it so that what you can do is probably in the next bar you can remove the cowbells and then try putting the ride and keep it a little you know interesting that's what i would suggest you to do it now i think i'm satisfied with whatever i've done i'm going to create a 16 bar of loop using only these and how do i do that for you to do that into a 16 bar right now this is a 4 bar i'm going to click on this mill clip duplicate again duplicate again duplicate right click and duplicate the shortcut is click on it command d cool that's the shortcut now i have a 16 bar like if you see here the number 16 and it comes to the end of my 17th bar which says this is the end of 16th bar now in my first bar i'm going to delete everything other than my kick i'm just going to have my kick in my second I'm going to delete the cowbell, I'm going to delete the open hats, I'm going to delete the closed hats. I'm just going to have the snare. In my third bar, which is nothing but the eighth bar, I'm going to delete this, I'm going to delete this, I'm going to keep the hats open. And then in the bar which is from 13 to 16, sorry, 12 to 13 to 16, correct? I'm going to keep everything. So now when I play everything together, So now as you saw only doing with one bar of beats I've just duplicated it and made it a little interesting by removing certain elements from the first bar adding another elements in the fourth from the fourth to eighth bar and you know as as you saw that's what I did I've almost covered down if you see here I'm almost made it up to 30 seconds by just doing the beats now imagine if you can add in a baseline here take it all the way till here get in piano somewhere from here and take it all the way from here you know that's how you make your structure that's how you build intro breakdown build up stanza and you know things like that if you do not understand what is intro breakdown i have clearly explained it in my previous video where i've given it like in you know five i've made a video telling what are the five things you need to do before starting you know before starting to produce music and i think that's one of the best things you guys should be doing before starting to produce music could be any genre again those are for common factors i'm not doing any specific videos for specific genres or daws all of the thing which i teach will be applicable for all of y'all in any daw or any machine you can take it and put it into fl you can take it and put the rules into ableton into pro tools into reaper anything 
you can just do that into any of the thing and it will work absolutely fine only thing is please follow whatever i said without fail and concentrate a little when you're doing it because it tends to confuse people when they open up a midi clip what you can do is you can just rewind the video and start where i've started to zoom in and zoom out and i think that will help you out also another thing before ending up this video as i hope everyone understood what i'm trying to teach here it is super simple for the beginners yes it is absolutely going to be a little difficult but do not lose hope this is a thing where you know you are facing it because you have never done this before but absolutely it's going to be super easy once you start doing and once you start practicing it every day on a basis of 2 to 3 hours i kindly request everyone to at least practice it for 2 or 3 hours where if you have to get a good hold or hold on your daw that is one of the best way for you to learn things and keep moving forward in your daw this is a very simple structure now what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this session and on my next video i'm going to teach how to put in a baseline using the same session and if you have any doubts please put it down in the comment i'm also going to put up my email in the description send me a mail on what you want to learn next this is definitely going to be more of an interactive session i'm not going to make this video fancy or you know not not going to be like you know just for the views or something but i i just barely want everyone to learn about daws and music production as i think it's one of the best way for you to free up your mind from all the negatives and i think it's the best way you can do it and for also people who are looking in for one on one classes or whoever stays in bangalore who want to come down and learn from me personally i'm going to again leave my email address below please email me let me know if you want to learn something or if you want to just learn one specific topic like a crash course or something yes i'm down to it let's talk about it and i hope you understood this video thank you so much for your valuable time on this please like subscribe and comment on amandra siksha this is suraj here thank you so much